I'm Debbie Gatlin. I cannot tell you all the times that God has protected me. He's protected my family. He's protected my loved ones. He's protected my husband. I cannot tell you what a mighty, mighty protector he is, how he loves to watch over us, how he loves to wrap his arms around us and protect us from the evil one, how the Bible says that he hides us under his wings as we ask, as we run into his presence. He's a God of protection. And I love that he loves to protect me from the evil one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy our lives. He loves to foil his plots and his plans. He loves to cover us to protect us, to, to fence us in, to wall us about with his love and his protection. I'll never forget one early morning about four years ago. It was February the 14th. It was Valentine's Day, so I just remember it real plain. And I was driving down the road, and I was singing to the Lord, just worshiping and loving God. And as I looked ahead on this very narrow road, there was some big black truck that was coming over in my lane. And I'm thinking, surely this man's going to go scoot over. And he kept getting closer and closer. And, and it had rained that day, so the, the grass was wet. And as I looked, I thought, this man's not getting over. And he's way over in my lane. There's no room for me. So I swerved off the road. And he went by, and I swerved back on the road. But when I swerved back on the road, I didn't have complete control my, because everything was wet. And I, I tried to turn in this way and that way, and I just, he just happened, happened, just happened to hit me on an area where it started, the road started going like this. And I'm trying to turn out of it, and I'm trying to keep presence in mind, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just praying, and all of a sudden I start doing it around in circles, and I hit a mailbox, and my van goes, turns over the side. And I'm, I'm laying sideways, and I'm looking, at the ground next to me, and I'm looking at broken out windows, and I'm thinking, oh, this is not good. I clip, clip, take off the seat belt and climb out the back of the door, and a guy comes over and he says, you okay? And I'm, I'm like, I'm fine. And I want you to know, I knew that God had protected me. I didn't even have an ache or a pain or anything else. And the, the car that was damaged, it ended up being something that God used for good. From that one vehicle, we got four vehicles out of that one vehicle. God turned it all around. It wasn't like instantaneous, but as we worshiped him, as we praised him, as we thanked him, and just thanked him that he protected me, God turned it all around. See, God is a God of protection. He protects his own. There's hardly a day that I get up without pleading the blood of Jesus over my family without putting walls of protection about my loved ones and my family. There's, I mean, it's, it's like almost unheard of, of me not doing that. Asking God to station his angels about us. Asking God to cover us with his precious blood. Asking God that he would be a shield about us, that he would watch over us, putting on the armor of God, because I know that I am not wrestling against flesh and blood, or prince, but, but against principalities and powers, world forces of darkness, world forces of wickedness, that, that the devil and his, his wicked hordes that come to steal, kill, and destroy, that would like nothing better than to destroy my family, destroy my life, to maim us, to hurt us in any way. He's a wicked, wicked enemy. I am so glad that our God is a mighty protector. He is an almighty God, and he is mighty to save us against every principality and power and force of darkness. He is mighty to save us from the plots and plans of the evil one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy our lives and destroy our family, destroy those things that are valuable to us. He is a mighty, mighty protector. As I was praying, I saw this great big boat, and I knew it was Noah's Ark. It was that ark that Noah and his family and all the animals that God saved went into, and they were able to pass from a watery grave into a place of safety. And then I saw this little boat, and I knew that that boat had to do with Jesus' disciples. And the story was brought to mind where Jesus came to these disciples, and they were not yet his disciples, but they were just fishermen. And Jesus said, come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. See, God wants to save, and God wants to heal, and God wants to deliver, and God wants to save, and God wants to heal, and God wants to deliver through you. God wants you to be the one 
that brings people into this ark of safety. Jesus Christ is that ark of safety. He's the ark that brings us to a place of safety, brings us out of death and destruction, and brings us into the life and the glory and the power of God. Now, Noah's ark, when it was built, God came to Noah, and he told him, he said, Noah, I want you to build an ark. I'm going to send a flood upon the land, and everything's going to be destroyed. Only what goes into the ark will be protected. Now, God told him how to build it. And he told Noah, he said, Noah, this is how it's got to be built. He said, I want you to take this ark, and I want you to build it of gopher wood. And he gave him dimensions. But one of the things that he said to him, he says, I want you to cover it with pitch. On the inside, it's to be covered with pitch. On the outside, it's to be covered with pitch. And as I did a little word, word study on the word pitch, I was like, wow, Lord, this is a type in the shadow, Lord, of what you've done for us. This is a type and shadow of you dying upon that cross for us and shedding that precious blood for us so that we could be covered, Lord, so that our sins could be washed away. Inside, we could be washed clean. On the outside, we could be covered and protected from all the forces of darkness. God, this is what you've done, Jesus, for all those who have called upon you, for all those that said, Jesus, I know that what you did on the cross was for me, that you were the only way to God. I'm so sorry for my sins. Thank you for taking my sins upon yourself. Lord, thank you for taking my place. I thank you. I receive what you did when you died and rose from the dead for me. I give my life to you. When we've done that, then we're brought into this ark of safety and we're covered, we're made new. And that pitch, the blood of Jesus, covers us and makes us new inside. And we can apply the blood of Jesus Christ to our life, to everyday walk life and our everyday talk life. The Bible says in Revelations that we overcome the evil one by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, that we're testifying of his greatness. We're testifying of his faithfulness. We're testifying that he will bring us through, that he's with us, that there's not failed one good word of all that God has promised us. Now, I want to, to read the word pitch to you because Noah covered the ark with this pitch on the inside and on the outside. The ark was covered with pitch. Without the pitch, the ark would have sunk. Now here, listen to this word. Pitch, this word pitch means to cover. It means to cancel. Cancel? That's what Jesus did. He canceled our sins. They're washed away. They're gone to appease, to make atonement for, to cleanse, to forgive. That's what we are. We are the forgiven of God. We're no longer sinners, but we are forgiven, made righteous with the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Hebrews, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness for sins. It is the pitch that washes us, that cleanses us, that makes us able to pass through the waters, the, that makes us able to pass through the fires of, of testing and hardship and difficulties and the plots and plans of hell. Pitch, to purge away, it's washing away our sins, to cleanse. And I love this. It comes from this word, a village. And what's the village? Why is it a village? The reason it's between all this is because a village is protected by walls. God wants walls built about you. God wants to protect you and watch over you. God wants to protect your family. He doesn't want you to be a casualty. He doesn't want the things that are happening to the families in this world where you, you go into their families and you see they're so devastated and destructive. There's so much destruction that their, their homes are ravished by the evil ones. He does not want that for you. Okay, that there's two words for pitch, the pitch on the inside and the in, and outside. Now, this is the one for the, the outside to properly cover. It talks about the henna blossom, the plant which was used for dyeing, to dye different things, to cover. It's a redemptive price. God's paid it. And listen to this, it's a price of life. It's a ransom. That's what Jesus has done for us. That's what he wants to cover us in every area. And then it crosses over to the mercy seat. The mercy seat is where the Ark of the Covenant, another ark, another box, that, that where God's presence was, where this, this ark on top of it was the called, this under, over top of the ark was this, these two 
this golden piece with these two giant seraphims with their great big wings covering it. And their blood was applied. They would put blood there, and it would cover, and it would atone for the children of Israel's sins. Now, God wants you to run into this ark of safety. Hebrews 11, 7, by faith, Noah warned by God about things not yet seen. And I'll tell you what, if you are a seeker of God, if you will seek God, God will warn you about the plots and plans of hell so that you can build an ark of protection about your family, so that you can stand against those things and cancel the assignments of hell, so you can put walls about your family. By faith, Noah being warned by God about things not yet seen, in reverence, God wants a people of reverence, people that fear him, people that honor him, people that esteem him. In reverence, he prepared an ark, that ark of safety. God is looking for people that prepare their hearts, that prepare their families, that watch over what their children watch, that shut the doors of darkness so that their family would be protected. God is looking for a people that will be a people that seek diligently to make sure the walls are up, that their, their family and their loved ones and even their communities and their areas are brought into a place of safety. In reverence, he prepared an ark for the salvation of his household. And listen, that salvation is in every area of your life. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy in every area of your life. But God says, I have a salvation that's so complete and so mighty. This, this great salvation will cover your finances. This salvation will cover your minds. This salvation will cover your bodies. This salvation will protect you. This salvation will cover your soul and bring you to heaven. This is a salvation that's complete in every way. This salvation will wash away the old and bring in the new. This salvation will give you destiny and purpose by which in reverence he prepared an ark for the salvation of his household and by which he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. You have to come into the ark to be protected. In Genesis, the sixth chapter, God told Noah to bring him and his family and all these animals into the ark. Only as they were in the ark were they protected. In Joshua, the second chapter, Joshua sends spies into the promised land and Two of the spies ended up in a house of a harlot named Rahab. Rahab hid these spies from the king's soldiers, and she asked for her life and the life of her family in exchange for their life. And now Rahab let them down through the window. that Her house was on the wall, and then she let them down. She had a scarlet cord she let them down with, a symbol of the blood of Jesus Christ. And the spies said, you make sure that all your family and all your household and all your loved ones are in that house and tie the scar scarlet cord to the window. And we see the scarlet cord, we will pass over your house. But if they are outside of the house, they will not be protected. Now, in Exodus, there's also a story about having to come into the house and having to have the, like the ark was covered with pitch like Rahab's house was covered by the scarlet cord. In Exodus, the children of Israel are waiting on the last plague, the plague that, that was to bring freedom to them. That plague, the angel of death was coming, and it was going to slay, and it was going to kill, and it was going to destroy. But they were to sled, shed the blood of the lamb. That lamb, a perfect lamb, and that blood, they were to take hyssop and stick that branch of hyssop in to that blood and apply it to their, the doorpost and on the lentils of the doorpost. And as they applied that blood, the Bible says if they came into that house under that blood, then the angel of death would pass over them. That's just what Jesus Christ has done to us. Now back to that little fishing boat. That little fishing boat was a symbol of Jesus looking for disciples that would follow him. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. See, God wants you to bring people into this ark of protection. Yes, your family. Yes, your loved ones. Yes, your children. Yes, but your community. Yes, he wants you to be used by him. He wants you to know how to shut the doors to darkness. 
in your children's life, in your family, in your own life, and in your community so that they can come into this ark of protection so they can be covered by the Lord's precious blood. So death and destruction will pass over. God is a mighty God and he wants to use you. He's a lover. He loves people. He wishes none to perish. He comes that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He's the God that gives life, life, life. He's not the evil one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's made provision for you. He's made provision for you, and he's called you a mighty deliverer. Now I'm going to pray for you. Father, I just thank you that you are a mighty God that loves to watch over your own. You love to protect, Lord. You love to deliver us, Lord. You're the God that hedges us about, Lord Jesus, that walls us in to protect us from the evil one, Lord God, from those things that would still kill and destroy our lives. So I'm asking that you would do that. I'm asking that you'd rescue. I'm asking that you'd heal. I'm asking that you'd deliver, Lord God. I'm asking that those that are carrying things that are so heavy, Lord God, that you would be the God that lifts it from them right now, Lord. Lord, lift it up. It's not, that it's not too hard for you. Lord, it's not too, strong, too heavy for you, Lord. God, you said cast every care upon you because you care for us. Oh, God, you love us. So I'm asking in Jesus' name, Lord, lift the burdens, Lord God. Lord, protect, Lord God. Watch over, Lord Jesus. Show us how to shut doors. Lord, those that don't know you, Lord Jesus, let them know that you're saying, come, follow me. Come, come into this place of safety. Lord, let them just call upon your name. Your word says, whoever calls upon your name, Jesus, they'll be saved. They'll be saved. So I just praise you and I thank you, Lord. Cover, 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 cover each and every person that's listening and their loved ones and families with your precious blood. This day, I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you have a wonderful week and know that God loves you. God loves you. Oh, this God, he loves you so very, very much. God bless you. Bye-bye.